Burnt feathers are made of a very tough protein known as keratin. It's the same protein that's found in the talons and the claws and the scales. It's the same protein that's found in human hair. These are truly remarkable structures when you consider that they have developed from simple scales. So the scale you would see on a bird's foot or on a reptile, this structure has evolved from that. It's now generally accepted that the bird's feathers first developed for the purpose of insulation. Indeed, many of the early dinosaurs are now thought to have had feathers for that purpose. But with time, they developed to form a flight feather, a feather which was able to have enough strength, had a large enough surface area, was light enough to be able to be used in the primaries and secondary to form a wing for flight. However, the insulation feathers are still very prominent in, in young birds, nestlings, but also found on the, on the feet of some birds, and they're found also uh, within the, the breast feathers, sometimes are plucked out and used um, to, for extra warmth within the nest. There are a whole series of very specialised feathers, for instance here with the peacock, these feathers don't have the barbs and barbules uh, apart from this one section up here. So those barbs and barbules act like a Velcro on most flight feathers. But here they deliberately don't have them and neither are they present on the, the feathers are used for purely for insulation. There are also some very specialised feathers. Uh, some near the mouth of uh, birds of prey can actually act to sense where the food is. So a bit like a cat's whiskers. Um, in the owls, the facial disc has uh, remarkable properties. They're actually used and can be moved to channel um, the sound to the owl's ears. So they're like uh, giant receptor dishes. The evidence that helps to back up the theory that they are for insulation is that the surface area to volume ratio in an animal that's large, it has a smaller surface area in relation to its volume and loses heat more slowly. And the converse is true for small animals. As we noted that in small birds, they have more feathers per given surface area than larger birds, suggesting that uh, they first developed for the purpose of keeping the animal warm. Most birds have a preen gland which produces an oily substance and that can be used to help to keep the feathers waterproof. You can often watch them preen themselves spreading that oily substance over their feathers. Because feathers can't last forever so birds have to go through um, at least one molt a year. Feathers are remarkable in, in how easy they are to be repaired if uh, some physical disruption causes the flight feather part to come away. So a simple movement of the beak can cause the Velcro-like hooks on the feather to join again and once more you have the appropriate surface area for flight. Bird feathers come in a huge range of colours Sometimes they can be just uh, a single colour, like swans. Other times they can be hugely exaggerated in their appearance, such as the peacock. In peacock, the, uh, the female is looking after the young, and the male has his extraordinarily developed feathers for display purposes, that they even encumbrance for flight. Other birds like the blackbirds, again a monocolour. Brown is very common, a good colour for camouflage. And in both the male and female looking after the young, they both tend to be camouflaged. Where they have a whole range of colours, so you've got the difference between the sexes, and you've got the distinctions of things like the blue tits, the great tits and birds of paradise and an amazing range of colours are possible.